we uh, plotted these two plunging lines and found the angle between them. I'm now going to show you how to find the plane that is common to those two lines, that contains those two lines in other words, and also the line that is perpendicular to those two lines. So to find the common plane, um, we actually have the net in the right position and in a way we have already found it. I'm going to get a curving line tool here and uh, I'm going to go to the very top point of the net and I'm going to draw out a line and I want to follow the great circle that passes through these two points. Uh, so we've already established that it's uh, 10, 20, 4 degrees uh, away from the center of the net uh, and I need to click about every 20 degrees or every two bold lines in order to get a nice smooth curve here. Uh, I can go more often if I want to. I could put a point right on that X there. Uh, here we go, uh, stringing out a, uh, a great circle until we get down to the bottom point of the net. There it is where we can double click and we have finished the great circle. So that is, great circle is a representation of the, um, uh, the plane that's common to those two lines. Now, uh, what about its orientation? Uh, well, um, we're using right-hand rules, so uh, it's in the right-hand half of the uh, projection here. Uh, so this direction up here where the arrow is, is the direction of strike. It looks to be a little bit west of north. And uh, there is actually a way to read off this orientation, because if I select the um, net, and then I go into the Arrange menu, and I go to um, uh, Rotate, uh, more rotation options, um, I can read off that we have rotated the, uh, the net uh, 343 degrees clockwise. Obviously that's uh, 17 degrees counterclockwise, uh, but 343 is going to be the azimuth of our plane. Uh, the strike of the plane, in other words. And then to measure its dip, we have to find out how far it is in from the primitive, and that is 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 66 degrees in. Uh, so then we can write in the orientation of this plane. It has a strike of 343 degrees and a dip uh, of uh, 66. Uh, so you, there you have the plane that's common to those two lines. Uh, so we can also find its pole, uh, which is going to be over here somewhere on the left-hand side of the net, um, and that pole is automatically the unique line that's perpendicular to these two lines that we plotted in the first place. So in order to do that, I'm going to zoom out a little bit until I can get my markers. I think I have some markers kicking around up here. Uh, so I'm going to bring a marker in, and I want to place this marker on the left-right straight diameter of the net here. And this great circle is 10, 20, 4 degrees away from the center. So the pole to that plane is going to be 10, 20, 4 degrees in from the edge. So we'll place that pole right there. Um, and then we need to see what is its orientation. Uh, so the best way to do that is to get hold of the net, and we're going to rotate the net around until the arrow goes through that point there. And at this point, uh, we can actually read off the rotation. The net is now 253 degrees uh, rotated from its starting position. Uh, and the plunge of this uh, plunging line uh, can be found by counting inwards from the primitive 10, 20, 24. Of course, it's the same distance as the great circle is out from the center. And it's the complement of this dip angle, 63 degrees. So 10, 20, 24. Uh, so we can enter in the orientation of that plunging line. Here it is. Uh, it was, um, I'm just going to go back to make sure I've got that uh, uh, orientation right, 253. Uh, so its orientation is a strike of, uh, sorry, a plunge, a trend of 253 and a plunge of 24. Uh, so there you have the um, 
angle between two plunging lines, the plane common to two plunging lines, and the line perpendicular to two plunging lines.